and I went like this and then I did this and my whole face, my whole jaw stretched down and I didn't see my tongue anymore, everything was black and then it went kind of like this. I do not condone the use of any legal or illegal substances. This video is strictly made for educational and harm reduction purposes only. Also, when I use the name Sclerotia, I refer to magic truffles. I do this because magic truffles are not true truffles. They are Sclerotia that are produced by a certain mushroom species. If you have done even a little bit of research on the internet or you visited some smart shops in Holland, then you've noticed that there are quite a variety of different magic truffles. So many exotic names and so many web shops and smart shops claiming that they have a special edition strong truffles. So many smart shops and web shops claiming that they have the strongest truffle species available on the market. And I will review all of them in one video. But how is it possible to review so many species and strains of truffles in only one video? Well, it's pretty easy. It is because there aren't so many strains of magic truffles that smart shops and web shops claim there to be. It is all just marketing. There are no special edition extra strong and rare truffle species that are only available in one shop. The golden teacher magic mushroom doesn't form sclerotia so this name is misleading you. There is no close relative of the cyanescence mushroom that forms sclerotia and produces a similar trip compared to the cyanescence mushroom. This is also just pure marketing. This is simply a juicy story used by people to trick other people in spending more money on truffles. And these are just a couple of tricks that smart shops and web shops use to trick people into spending more money. That's why I made this video. To filter all the bullshit away, come straight down to the truffles and tell you the actual truth so that you know which one is best for you to pick and the one that suits you the most. I'd like to begin with telling you how I know that smart shops and web shops use tricks to lure people into spending more money. There are only three producers or breeders of truffles that I know of, which is Max Smart, the Truffle Brothers, and Fresh Mushrooms LTD. So if these are all of the producers of magic truffles, then all of the web shops and all of the smart shop have to pick either one or three of those. And Max Smart, one of those truffle breeders, they produce, distribute, and sell all of their truffles all on their own. So all of the web shops, all of the smart shops everywhere in the world have to get either from Fresh Mushrooms LTD, their truffles, or they have to get it from the Truffle Brothers. One shop may sell special wizard truffles, and another shop may sell special exclusive Hydra truffles, but this wouldn't make sense because if there are only two breeders of truffles out there then all of the other web shops and all of the smart shops should have access to hydra and wizard truffles also if one shop has the exclusive wizard truffle then all of the other shops should have access to the wizard truffle also because there are only two breeders of truffles out there so because there are only two breeders of truffles out there, the smart shops and web shops don't have the luxury to sell exclusive products because they simply can't. If one shop sells an exclusive product, then another shop should also have access to this exclusive truffle because there are only two breeders. This only ends up into massive competition because why would you buy truffles from a new startup company if you can get the exact same species of magic truffles from a well-known company. If misleading marketing wasn't the case, then there wouldn't be so many different brands of truffles that are sold by web shops. They need a unique selling point to sell their truffles. And how do they do this? By making attractive artworks on the truffle packages so that they can attract customers because it looks cool. They tell an awesome story about their rare exclusive truffle in the product description. They give attractive, misleading names to truffle species that have nothing to do with the truffle species. The name itself is just cool. And some companies don't even give you the names of the species that are in the truffle packages. They only give the package an attractive name to create the illusion 
that their product range is totally different than another brand's product range. If you've been in Amsterdam or in other big cities in Holland, then you've probably seen the magic truffles of the company Sirius. Sirius is one of the biggest magic truffle distributors out there. I've tried a lot of Sirius's magic truffles and I noticed that on their website and on their packages they don't pronounce the name of the magic truffle species that are in their packages. So I called them and they told me this beautiful story of their purple rain truffle that gives these profound effects on you. So I asked them, well, which truffle species or which Clarotia species is the purple rain truffle? And they couldn't tell me. They weren't allowed to, they said. Then I asked them, from which truffle breeder do you buy your truffles? And then once again, they said they weren't allowed to tell me. So they give their truffles exotic names like Golden Teacher, simply to attract you, to lure you into spending more money. And they won't tell you the name of the species that is in their products, simply because they want to distinguish themselves from other smart shops and web shops and brands out there. This way customers will return to their shops because they had good experiences with their truffles, with their products. If Sirius would announce the magic truffle strains that they use on their packages, then why would a customer return to them if they can also buy the exact same strain from another brand, brand or a smart shop that is close by them? And don't get me wrong, I love Sirius, but these are just some of the marketing tricks that they use to distinguish themselves from other brands. And the serious truffles taste better than the Max Smart truffles to be honest. They are not so sour and soppy. There are only three magic mushroom species that we know of that produce Sclerotia. Sclerotia is the mycologistic name for magic truffles. These species are the Psilocybe Mexicana, the Psilocybe Atlantis, and the Psilocybe tampanensis. These three natural occurring Sclerotia species are the only ones that we know of that are psychoactive. But there are probably a lot more of them out there. It is just that Sclerotia, unlike mushrooms, grow underground. So it is incredibly hard for us to find new species because they are all under the surface of the ground. Outside of these three natural occurring psychoactive Sclerotia species, there are 11 more hybrid species produced by men. These remaining 11 hybrid strains of magic truffles are either mutations or crossbreeds originating from the original in nature occurring magic truffle species. The differences in strains is that they variate in alkaloid percentages. 11 hybrid species plus three original species is 14 actual magic truffle species that are out there. These 14 strains all differ in alkaloid content. Psilocybe tampalandia, aka the high Hawaiian truffle. They are one of the most potent truffles out there. And they also give by far the most visual effects compared to all other truffle strains. This shows that although the high Hawaiians are a hybrid, they strongly variate in effects compared to other truffles. And this is awesome because this means that all of these 14 truffles all can have different effects compared to another one. So now comes the part of the video where I rank all of these 14 truffle species. And I must say that I haven't tried them all. Some are still on my to-do list, but I can still give my perspective on this for you. So there are 14 magic truffle species and three of those are exclusive species produced by Max Smart. Those are the Psilocybe Payateros, the Psilocybe Tampelandia, and the Psilocybe Naranja. As I earlier addressed in this video, MacSmart is a truffle breeder, so it is possible for them to develop three magic truffle species that are really exclusive compared to other brands. But of course, there is no information on the internet out there, so I cannot confirm that those three species are actually exclusive ones. But I'm still going to include these three species because they gave me very divergent effects compared to other magic truffles. From a scientific perspective, the effects of truffles and magic mushrooms shouldn't deviate so much between strains. 
because the only thing we know from science is that one magic mushroom or truffle strain may have lots of psilocybin in it but not so much psilocin or, and, and another strain may have lots of psilocin in it but not so much psilocybin so from science we only know that between strains there is only a difference in alkaloid percentages to make it simple, one strain is stronger than the other. But yet, all of these smart shops and web shops describe so much difference between their products. This one is for spiritual exploration. And this one gives you lots of energy and euphoria compared to other ones. And scientifically, they can't prove that. But from my own experience, I can say that sometimes they are right. They can differ that much in effects, yet no one knows why. Some species do really give different effects than other ones. And not only in strength or duration, but also in the literal effects of it. To move on to the list, these are from my perception the weakest magic truffles out there. I've tried the Mexicana, the Atlantis and the Tampanensis, so I haven't tried all of them. But I have read multiple trips reports about all of these species and I have read multiple product descriptions on multiple web shops and smart shops websites. So I am pretty sure to say that these ones are for beginners. So as I've said, I've tried the Atlantis and the Mexicana truffle and the Tampanensis truffle, but the Atlantis and the Mexicana truffle, they both give me the same effects. They both give me similar trips. But then there is one remarkable thing that keeps happening, and that is the Tampanensis truffle. They make me very emotional, and the visuals on these truffle are more immersive compared to the Mexicana and the Atlantis. I find the Tampanensis truffle to be the most suitable for doing spiritual work or inner work. These truffles give me clarity and they also make me very emotional at the same time. This way I can dive deep into myself to work on myself. My main point is that if you are going to do inner work or you're going to do self-development work or inner healing, then the Tampanensis truffle is the best choice to make. But if you are going to trip, for example, with friends to uh, use them recreationally, then I recommend the Atlantis and the Mexicana truffle. I recommend these because these are the two species that originate from nature. You can also try one of the hybrids that were on the list. But if you want to try the true mother nature's finest truffles that are actually from nature, then pick the Atlantis or the Mexicana. This is the list of truffles which from my perception are a little bit stronger than the previous list I showed you. And I have actually tried all of them multiple times. Even though I want to try making a beautiful story about how different they all are, they are not. They were almost exactly the same, all of them. I've tried them all multiple times, as I've just said, and I didn't notice specific effects that were dom more dominant in other species compared to the other species on the list. The only thing with these truffles is that Compared to the other list I showed you, the previous list I showed you, they are stronger than those. So if you are a more experienced psychonaut, then you can pick either one of these. The Silusaibi Tampalandia, aka the High Hawaiians, and the Silusaibi Payateros, aka the Dragon's Dynamite. And these are very interesting. My first psychedelic trip ever was on 11 grams of High Hawaiians mixed with 7 grams of Dragon's Dynamite. And that was one interesting trip. I don't recommend mixing truffle species because from my perception it is best to experience all of the truffle species individually so that you know which one suits you the most. But that day, I, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> now the name High Hawaiians is unrightfully used because there are no Sclerotia or magic truffle species originating from Hawaii. So it is kind of misleading, but I like the name anyway. The High Hawaiians main characteristic effects is that it gives tons of euphoria, 
and it gives very bright and intense visuals. Web shops and smart shops put in the description on their website of these high Hawaiians that they give very visual effects and that they give much of euphoria. And normally they lie, but with this one, they are right. I can tell from my own experience. This one time, this was during my first trip. I went into the mirror and um, I looked into the mirror, I stared into my face and I went like this. And then I did this. And my whole face, my whole jaw stretched down and I didn't see my tongue anymore. Everything was black. And then it went kind of like this. It was looking like the painting, the screen. These visuals are superior compared to other strains I've tried. Which makes me think that the Psilocybe Payateros, the Psilocybe Naranja and the Psilocybe Tampalandia, aka the High Hawaiians, are really exclusive truffle strains produced by Max Smart that are not available anywhere else on the planet or that are not produced anywhere else on the planet. So if you want to go for visuals, go for Hawaiians. And now, my personal favorite. The Psilocybe Payateros, aka the Dragon's Dynamite. And this truffle truly is a special one. It is because this one gives so much energy and instead of euphoria, I almost want to call it ecstasy. It's like you feel ecstatic throughout your whole body. It's more similar to MDMA than it is to uh, the feelings of euphoria that you get on truffles or magic mushrooms. And yes, I do exaggerate when I compare Dragon Dynamite truffles to MDMA because you won't end up like... But it is likely that you gain lots of energy and that you feel really good. I like to be full of energy. It makes me exuberant. It makes me want to ride my bike to go on an adventure with a couple of friends. I did this truffle almost always outside because it is so much fun to just go on an adventure with friends and to feel all like, like this and being excited just by seeing a flower or a bee. It's, oh, it's awesome. And that's why I don't recommend this truffle for a beginner. It is because it is a very hard truffle. It, uh, it can be terrifying if you can't handle the effects of such an intense trip. And especially when you're outside, it could be hard to handle. So make sure that you know what you are beginning with. Make sure that if you want to try this truffle outside of your house, outside of the comfort of your house, Know what you're doing, be experienced and be with people who are sober. So yes, that's the full story about the magic truffle species that are available. Now you know with which truffle to start if you're a beginner, if you're a little experienced and when you are an experienced Saukinat. And you know the dirty tricks smart shops and web shops play on their websites. And I don't want to talk down on these smart shops and these web shops because they do awesome work. It is such a privilege that we can trip legally on these magic truffles. These are just simply the tricks that they use. So thank you for watching and I will see you on your next trip.